School funding is a huge issue in the state and locally um, as con funds continue to shrink. What do you think the district should do to adjust? One of the four uh, items that I've indicated in my written information uh, that I think I can give as potential contributions is to help the district find new sources of fund funding, new financial resources. Uh, these can take several different forms. When I was here at the university, I served in a number of capacities, one of which was director of international programs for the campus. Uh, one of the instructions that I had from uh, the administrators was that I needed to walk the halls of Congress because if you can learn ahead of time when a project is going to come down the pike, you'll have more time to prepare a good proposal. The last proposal that I prepared prior to my leaving as a retired professor was uh, a proposal through the U.S. Department of Agriculture for over $1 million, and it was the only proposal that was granted in the entire United States. Uh, today, the partially completed Jefferson Farm Institute south of the uh, South Farms uh, is a partial manifestation of that for a variety of reasons. One of the most important was that after we got it started, the continuing funding source tended to be the Kellogg Foundation, and Kellogg isn't selling as many cornflakes as they used to. And that makes a difference in terms of the amount of resources that they had available. The, the board rotates, so I rotated off of the board at the end of my tour, and some other of my colleagues are working with it, and, and uh, someday, hopefully, there will be additional resources that will complete that farm, which will be the model of what Thomas Jefferson had in, on his actual farm. Now, what does this have to do with the public schools? Several things. One, I have learned how to write grants. And there is an art to writing a proposal to get grant funding. Number two, I have learned that there are various sources of funding that can be tapped, but you have to work at it. They do not come knocking at your door. You must be on the process. You've got to be on the lookout for a, a opportunity to write a grant proposal. So that's one thing. That's on the monetary side. Secondly, we can do a number of things to supplement the resources of the public school system with resources from here on this campus. Let me give you an example. We have over a hundred countries represented, the chancellor tells me, with regard to the uh, entire student population. My experience in working in 30-some developing countries around the world uh, has led me to believe that every one of those students would love to be able to t come to a class and tell about their home country. Why not have classes in living geography in our public school system where you would have a, an instructor who would put together the lesson plan and would coordinate with someone here on campus and make arrangements for the students from their countries to come and, in fact, tell them what life is really like in their home country. And in the process, if at all possible, provide some academic support, some academic credit to those students for providing part of that. It's, you know, in many respects, it's a win-win situation without money changing hands on either side. Absolutely, that's a good idea. Um, what are your thoughts on the bond issue coming up on the April 3rd election? Two or three things I think need to be mentioned with regard to um, this entire thing. I want to broaden the question just okay. a little bit to include 
the not only the, the bond issue, uh, but also the the funding that uh, is going to be a separate item on the ballot. Okay. Okay. Members of the board in the past, retired members of the board, in other words, have indicated to me that they made a deliberate effort in the past not to put both a proposal for funding, direct funding, mm -hmm. and bond issues on the same ballot. Okay? okay. They would stagger them so that the, the taxpayer wouldn't get hit with a terrific load. Okay. All right. For some reason or other, that procedure w was violated this time. Okay. And so we have a, an exceptionally large bond issue that's facing the voters. Another item that needs to be mentioned is that the illustration is given that for an average house in Columbia, the value is $150,000, and the tax increase would be approximately uh, $150 per year. Okay. If everyone were average, and we know from statistics that that's not the case. Mm -hmm. That would be true, but it, in fact, particularly on the rural urban fringe, I, for example, live on a farm close to where Battle High School is being built. Okay. I have neighbors who have combines that are worth $150,000 and homes that are worth $150,000. How much is their tax increase going to be? It's not going to be 150. It's going to be essentially 300,000. Okay. So there has been a, a certain lack of transparency with regard to really what the tax load is going to be in those kinds of situations. And then I guess mm, to follow up what do you have a different kind of idea of what you would like to do with the proposal? Do you, would you want to go back to staggering it, or what? What's your plan of action? I'd do two things. Number one, I certainly would stagger them, without question, because that's a tried and true method that, in fact, uh, used to be used uh, and apparently had a reasonable amount of success. Another aspect. Uh, of it is that uh, I would make an effort to um, provide real resources. I mentioned the students from campus. Mm. We have retired members of many service organizations who could serve as mentors for some of the individuals who will eventually if not helped, end up being uh, dropouts or fail to, to graduate. And then obviously uh, there is the need for somebody to consciously be on the lookout for grant funds. Okay. I, I would not, uh, I, as a board member, my job, uh, the job is not one of doing it. That's the administration's responsibility. But I would be able to teach people in the administration on the techniques of writing proposals, and I would be willing to do that. Okay. Um, so it, looks, it seems as though you would like to be a guide to help people that aren't necessarily as knowledgeable as you to just get up to speed. Correct. Okay. Um, what are some challenges and or opportunities you see with the building of Battle High School, the third school in Columbia. Do you think there's going to be uh, what? What are you? What do you think are the biggest challenges and opportunities when it comes to building a new school? The biggest challenge is to develop a sense of caring community. I use as the illustration of elementary school about two to three miles down the road by the name of Two Mile Prairie School. My two of my three children went to that school. When you visit that school, 
you can walk in the front door and you can almost feel the desire to learn. Okay. okay? Nothing that is particularly outstanding. The gym looks like a, a, a tin barn. Okay? But bricks and mortar never taught anybody anything. They help, but they don't do the teaching. Right. You know, The teachers are the ones who are the key individuals. And we've had the good luck of having a series of principals who were both outstanding and were able to attract outstanding teachers. And now, in fact, we're looking at that population of what started out to be a one to two room school having between three and four hundred students because parents have found out that that's where you can send your kids to get a good education. Okay. Um, going back to your sense of pride in the community and pride in your school, some people, some families are kind of worried that with the addition of Battle High School that there's going to be even more stratification between socioeconomic classes in comparing the schools. Um, what do you have to say to those families? That's a potential problem, no question about it. The way I would deal with it is with a learning technique, a teaching technique, if you please, that is used in a number of departments here on campus. It's called simulation exercises. Okay, the medical school uses it now to train doctors, to train nurses. Engineering uses it in a number of their courses. We in economics use it in a number of our situations. Okay, and the um, surprising thing is that there are so few people who really understand what a simulation exercise is. 